student to decide what is correct and what is not, and we predict that for about 10% of the triples, the probability of them being correct is above 70%. So to understand how well we are predicting the correctness of the triples, we use the gold standard, uh, we use Freebase, and we make an assumption called local closed word assumption. This basically means if uh, a subject predicate object exists in Freebase, because Freebase has a precision above 99%, we will believe it to be true. Otherwise, if the subject predicate exists in Freebase, but the object does not, then assuming Freebase knowledge is locally complete, we consider that object is wrong. For example, if um, Freebase knows two daughters of Barack Obama, we consider any other information about Barack Obama's children to be wrong. And um, if the subject predicate does not exist in Freebase, we assume it is unknown and we remove it from the gold standard. And uh, this graph shows that the probabilities we predict are well uh, calibrated. So this means, for example, if we look at the probability, uh, the triples where we predict a probability of 0 0.7 to be correct, if we put all of the triples in the same bucket, and then the accuracy of those triples, in other words, the real probability for those triples to be correct is also seven, uh, 0 0.7 uh, or 70%. So this is our first crazy idea. And uh, our second idea goes like this. Seven out of them have a page rank among top 15% of the websites. Why? Because we are human beings. We all love gossip, right? And if we look at the knowledge base trust, all of them have the trustworthiness in bottom 50%. And here is another example. If I can, yes. So here is a, like a social sort of a website. And um, we know, oops. Woo. OK, so our system knows nothing about British women. However, it look at the information provided on this page. And uh, it decides, well, this lady is not from um, uh, uh, New Zealand, but from Wales, and so this page is less trustworthy. Okay, so both of the projects got a lot of uh, news attentions for Knowledge Vault. The most uh, optimal one is Goodbye Knowledge Graph, Hello Google Knowledge Vault. And uh, for uh, Knowledge Base Trust, the one I like best is, um, let's wait for it. So why some people are so terrified by the idea of a Google Truth machine? And um, neither of these uh, projects was launched at Google uh, in the way it was designed. And here are many reasons, and one of the technical reasons is like this. So uh, when we extract the knowledge, we use distance supervision, and so the training data are con uh, only contain free-based predicates. So the known predicates. On the other hand, uh, the patterns we learned require the type of the entities. So we will restrict only to free base entities. So we will only add stuff into the top left corner. And um, in KV, among the top three, uh, top uh, 0 0.3 billions of high confidence triples, about 60% are not in knowledge graph. And that is only 1% of knowledge graph, even at the year of 2014. And then now Google Knowledge Graph has like 70 billions of facts as they announced. And for knowledge-based trust, uh, restricted by this uh, extraction uh, low coverage, so the reliable score, uh, we can compute it only for no more than 20% of the websites. Okay. I know your question. Your question now is, so where is the business? The business actually lies 
in the problem behind knowledge vault and uh, knowledge based trust. And this problem is called knowledge fusion. And so basically taking the knowledge triples and their provenance, basically telling which extractor is extracting from which data sources. And then we want to predict the probability for each triple for the correctness. So in other words, the input can be considered as a three-dimensional three uh, input where one dimension is the data items or the subject predicate pair attribute of an entity. Uh, one dimension is the source and one dimension is the extractors. So each cell tells us which extractors extracts from which data sources uh, about this particular data item and the output are the true values for this data item. So uh, essentially we use the graphical model and here I'm going to talk a little bit about the technical details and um, here uh, XEWDV uh, represents our observations. What an extractor E extracts from um, uh, this web page W about um, uh, the, the data item and value pair about a particular triple, so whether that is extracted. And then we have two Latin variables. CWDV represents whether the source really re uh, provide this triple. And uh, VD represent uh, what are the correct values for this data item. And then we have uh, parameters. AW is the accuracy of the web source. PE and RE are the precision and recall of the extractor. And so in this way, uh, so the, whether an uh, extractor would extract something from a source depends on the quality of the extractor and also depends on the source, whether the source really provides it. And whether a source provides something depends on whether this thing is correct and what is the accuracy of this source. So we run EM method on this um, graphical model and eventually we compute AW, this is the knowledge base trust, and we compute uh, this, uh, this uh, VD, which is the knowledge vault uh, prediction for the correctness of the triples. Certainly this is um, uh, a simplified version. And then we built a set of libraries for this knowledge fusion and use it in various uh, Google products. For example, we have a single truth model which assumes for each subject predicate there is a single correct value. We use it in Google Now email extraction. We got a precision of 0 0.9992 and a recall of 0 0.9928. And this helps us remove the 80% of the errors by rule-based fusion. We use it for entity type identification. Here we use a multi choose model because one entity could belong to multiple types and this gives us a precision of 0 0.91 and a recall of 0 0.98. We also use it in a project where we try to collect a long, uh, long tail verticals and uh, this long tail verticals could be like yoga poses, Hindu deities, etc. and these are basically things that people sort of, uh, some people care about, but it is not globally popular. And uh, we used two steps. First, uh, we decide interesting long tail verticals, and for each vertical, we find up to three data sources. And the second, we have the crowd collect triples from those sources using some annotation tools. And here I'm lying a little bit. Actually, those crowd are not really sort of the crowd on Amturk, but actually Google contractors. And also they did like heavy curation to reach the 99.9% .9 precision after they collect the knowledge. And even so, even if it does not look extremely sexy, but we still like face a lot of uh, research challenges and te or technical challenges. And one of the challenge is to, the first challenge is basically to find interesting verticals and uh, high quality sources. And the second one is to detect the errors from the uh, curation. 
and um, the errors from the data sources. And what we do there is for every triple we curate, we try to find evidence from at least the three web sources. And uh, this is actually not so easy to do for like long tail uh, verticals because they are not popular. And uh, if we just apply various kinds of extraction methods, our recall uh, uh, is 0 0.65. For 65% of the knowledge, we are able to find three evidence. But on the other hand, the precision is only 0 0.2, meaning when we are able to find evidence for a correct triple, meanwhile, we are able to find evidence for four incorrect uh, triple. So this is pretty much uh, not usable. And uh, well after we apply the knowledge fusion model, we sacrificed the recall a little bit, but we are able to boost the precision up to 85%. Okay, so um, by mid of the last year, uh, that's the time I left Google, we collected long tail verticals for like more than 100 verticals, and uh, this gives us 2.2 million, millions of triples, 10,000 entities, about 700 predicates for those verticals, and we have millions of daily registered users. And the most popular long tail vertical, I wouldn't have time for a quiz, but last summer, as you can imagine, is Pokemon uh, characters. And the least popular one is a database conference. <laughs> so if uh, we go back to look at the matrix, basically what um, the long tail, the lightweight vertical is doing is to add a lot of new entities and a lot of new attributes for those long tail verticals. Okay, so now let's uh, move on to my Amazon life. I'm able to do so. Okay, good. So at Amazon, my new mission or the mi mission of our team is to build an authoritative knowledge base for every product in the world, including products sold at Amazon or outside Amazon. And before I accepted this job offer, I was thinking, what does it mean? Is that a small subset of the generic knowledge graph? And then I convinced myself that it should be a big subset. Movies, music, book, this is a, a huge kind of a portion of a, a generic knowledge graph. All of them are related to products. And after I joined, I realized actually product graph is has like big potential and can be very big. It is overlapping with the generic knowledge graph because currently Freebase or Google knowledge graph, they do not provide much of information for products. And why? Because this is extremely hard. For products, we do not have just uh, uh, a few like um, uh, sources where we can curate the knowledge from. And the, uh, the we have um, a large number of new products every day, millions of new products every day, and so curation is impossible, and to keep the knowledge base up to date is a big challenge. And even more, we have like thousands of product categories. Even just to define the ontology, the schema for the, um, uh, for the, for the, for the product graph is non-trivial. So we basically have two solutions. The first one, we call it human in the loop knowledge learning. Knowledge should be learned, should not be curated, but it cannot be completely automatically learned. It needs human in the loop to generate label data, to generate annotations, so on and so forth. And the second solution, which is actually, I mean, in the same flavor, is called hands off the wheel data integration. And we need to integrate data from multiple sources to build this knowledge base, and we want the, the, the job for the data providers, data owners, to be extremely easy. It's hands off the wheel, and it should use knowledge, uh, use machine learning to improve the quality uh, and uh, reduce the work for them. With all of this said, we are hiring, and uh, if you are interested or your friends are interested, let me know. We are hiring both scientists and engineers. This is ending my talk, and thank you very much. So I guess we have uh, time for questions, yes? Mm-hmm. 
so the question is whether we will set several sources as trustworthy sources. And uh, whenever we see some conflicts from those sources, we will choose those sources to, as our belief. And actually, we try not to do so, because even good sources could make mistakes. My previous, of, um, like, um, uh, uh, my previous research on stock data and flight data, data shows that even the like, uh, authoritative or popul most popular stock websites and flight websites, they make mistakes, and they make mistakes that you cannot believe. So what we do is we look at the agreement between the sources and the trustworthiness of the sources, and we apply a graphical model to decide what is likely to be true, rather than just blindly believe a few sources. Yes? Mm -hmm. So the question is uh, how to uh, improve the knowledge representation to make it more easily queryable using like um, natural language queries. And uh, we follow the current sort of uh, tradition to use triples. And basically we consider only the uh, facts that we can uh, represent using triples, basically subject, predicate, objects. And um, uh, however, on the other hand, we can still improve the technologies to understand the uh, natural language queries and answer it using the knowledge we have. And this is what Google has been successfully doing in Google Knowledge Search. And this is also what Alexa has been doing to answer the, or to have the conversations with the users. Yes? Uh, sorry, product graph to what? Uh, can you repeat your question? Oh, I see. Okay. Uh -huh. So the question is uh, whether we want to, once we build the product graph, whether we want to release the data, possibly part of it. <laughs> yes. So the question is, what are the applications for product graph and what would be the economic impact? Uh, there are many, many applications for knowledge, uh, for product graph. For Amazon retail, we can use the knowledge to improve product search, improve product um, discovery, improve uh, like personalization. And uh, in Alexa, we can use the knowledge to better answer users' questions, to uh, better assist the users. And in AWS, this knowledge base could help for a lot of uh, machine learning tasks. And also, as you said, I mean, the knowledge itself, that is valuable. So what is the economic impact? So this really depends on how we sort of mirror it. At Amazon, one of the key belief is uh, customer obsession. We want to make sure our, customer, uh, our customers ha are happy. We want to uh, try our best to improve their experiences with um, Amazon shopping, et cetera. And when we are knowledgeable, when our system are knowledgeable, they can better serve the customers. And that, we believe, eventually will bring economic impact on the, on the company. Yes, question there. Mm -hmm. So the question is, uh, what is the ground truth we will use to train the uh, 
models and to evaluate the models. It is by no means easy. And um, as, um, as basically, we do not have well two sources to say, OK, this is our ground truth. And we need to smartly generate a lot of labels, just as what we heard in the morning for the like um, uh, video-related stuff. So we will use, uh, this is partially why we have a human in the loop. Human, they need to provide, they, w they will help us to provide the labels, provide the ground truths, and uh, that hopefully will improve a lot and help us to train the models. Another question there? So uh, the two questions are related. The first one is uh, external like data sources. They are changing their data all the time. And the second question is, uh, I mean, the real world is changing and how we are able to capture that. This is a very good question. And uh, so basically, we do need to refresh our knowledge very frequently. And uh, only in this way. And actually, as I said, um, Amazon has like uh, millions of new products every day, and uh, we have to refresh the knowledge base to get all of the new information. And also, we set the active period for each, um, not for each, but for like uh, appropriate triples whenever it makes sense about at from what time to what time does this piece of knowledge make sense. And um, uh, yeah, so basically we refresh the knowledge, we make sure we do it incrementally, and we make sure that uh, we retrain the model periodically such that the model can capture with the um, data, and also we do mining such that we can tell the trend of the data. Okay, I guess I'm using up my time. Thank you very much.